going to talk to you about the Monoprice Delta Mini 3D printer. Timing is because I'm getting to the end of my first roll of filament. Look at it there. I'm printing a job right now, something to design myself, having a blast with that, getting to use slicers and CAD CAM, and it's absolutely great. This is a hobbyist printer, though. This is not something that out of the box is going to do wonderful things for you. You're going to have to tinker with it. You're going to have to do some things to it. There's adjustments. There's this wonderful guide that uh, Dennis Brown put together, and you can find this on Facebook. Uh, MP Mini Delta Owners Forum. Um, you see I've highlighted things. I've, I've done pretty well everything in this guide, and it's helped me get reliable, repeatable, high-quality prints out of this incredibly low-priced uh, device. So I'm quite pleased with it. So what can you do in a month? What kind of things you get out of your first reel? Tell us more, tell us more. So... You print the cat first, it's a calibration thing. If you can't print that, cat's in the printer back. And you can get another one until you can. I had to send my first printer back. This is a prototype of a device I made that I'll show you a little bit more on that later. This is a microphone adapter, which uh, hooks into a Bose speaker, complete with tie wrap cable relief. This is a castle, a Pomeranian. This is a um, calibration cube. This is a uh, 20 by 40 aluminum Boulder that I designed from bits and pieces that are on uh, Thingiverse. This over here is a jig for putting brass brass uh, screw nut holders. Must be a better word for that. Uh, that came off uh, Thingiverse. I, f I forget who I got the design from, but absolutely brilliant. It was fun putting that together, printing out all the parts. I had to make some of my own mods on it get it to work the way that I want to get it to work. Some of the tools that I use frequently, X-Acto knife, carpenters or box knife, green tape on my platen over here. They don't call it a platen printing surface. Calipers, very important if you're designing your own things. This is another microphone stand type adapter. This is uh, three solenoids uh, in the second version or third version of that adapter that I designed. This is to control a guitar amp remotely. Uh, these three solenoids hook up to uh, Arduino. And uh, I can control an amplifier from uh, literally hundreds of feet away. And this is good for when you're recording and things like that. This is a light holder that I made. The light that it's holding is one of those garage lights where there's three of these units. One, two, three. Uh, into a screw-in type of air. If you take that apart, deconstruct it, add uh, 20 feet of cable to it, you get this sort of affair. And I use it for music videos and letting up bands and that sort of thing. I made an adapter, I designed it, and 3D printed it. It works perfectly. There's actually a metal piece in there because um, with lots of wear and tear, the uh, PLA filament will eventually break down. So there's, there's actually a metal piece in there. But again... Design the stuff, you put it together, you prototype it, and there's a prototype over there. Far more gangly and, and weird, but uh, in this bit in here is the whole gels and that sort of thing. If you're into videos, you know what that means. All right, so this is still printing. Let's go look at some other stuff again. Dennis Brown. Amazing work. You're going to need that. You're a hobbyist. you got to get your hands in there. you got to do some stuff. Uh, here's a recording area. Here's a... Um, you know when you put your hand over your ear and you can hear better? Ha! I 3D printed one. I actually got a couple of these. And when I'm recording or tracking, you can wear this. I'm not going to show a picture of myself wearing this because I look ridiculous. But uh, it actually does work and uh, comes in quite handy. Now, this is a song that's in the background, by the way, uh, on my digital audio workstation. Here's that clip on a microphone stand. This is a Bose speaker. It's got... A hole built into it, I put a hole into this, the screw goes through it, into a microphone stand, another one over there. These are my rear speakers to my home theater system. Again, I'm a musician, so I have lots of microphone stands, and boy, does this ever work well for me. Over here we have uh, we have a camera crawler that I uh, designed and built some time ago. Oop, remote control. 
This is balsa wood that I made the prototype out of. Here's the real one with uh, real aluminum and a far nicer carriage and a better uh, stepper motor for it. This will be powered by uh, Arduino, or, or Arduino if I'm saying that correctly. Microcontroller, but 3D printing. So again, it hooks onto a microphone stand. As you can see, this print job didn't go so well, but it's it's functional. And I'll just reprint it again until it uh, it prints the whole job. But again, you get a tinker with these things. So I'll also print another one for the other side. Then I can hang it and put it at any height. Over here we have a deflector. So there's four pads in there, which are holding this piece of um, reflective cardboard that came out of a good foods food delivery box. And I use it to uh, light up my uh, green screen shots. The lights that I showed you in the other room point into this. This diffuses light, and you get very, very even lighting. Why is it under the electric fireplace, Mr. Schultz? I don't know if this is voodoo or not, but these um, they're, they are heat sensitive, and I guess you could melt them, but the little bit of heat that comes out of this, at, at the setting that it's on, seems to anneal them, seems to make them harder and stronger. Also, it causes them to shrink a bit, which is a tighter fit all the way around for for these holders. So um, a little bit of voodoo about that. I guess you can piece that together from information on the uh, internet. But I found if I take my PLC printed pieces, put them under here, leave them under there for a few hours, they come out harder, and anything that's form fitted or friction fitted comes out tighter, and that's a good thing. Here's the guitar I was telling you about earlier on. I printed these knobs as well. And you see the holes in the top? The solenoids fit on top of that. And I can control this amplifier from 100 feet, again, 100 feet away with a Arduino controller. So I've been having a blast with it. Printed quite a few things. A lot of things do not seem because there's a lot of false starts. There's a lot of things that didn't print all the way through. There's many, many prototypes and stuff that I built for myself, this is still printing. This is actually one of those angle pieces that was in that uh, light reflector over there. So I do highly recommend the uh, printer. It is hobbyist though. I don't recommend it necessarily for your 12 year old, unless your 12 year old has you know, got some mechanical skills and, and some aptitude that way, because there's a lot of tinkering that goes into this to make these things print. There's a lot of there's a lot of disappointment when a print doesn't turn out for um, no particular. That, that's not so bad. That's something called a black on the bottom. That's so. There you go. By all means, buy one. Have a good time with it. You can print lots and lots of things. I'm going on to my second reel. Wish me luck. The music that you're hearing was produced by myself and, and some of my friends. The mechanical noises are the printer. Actually, so uh, enjoy the uh, 